Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with Minho for another weird ass reading that we're doing. Sebastian X Bam. Yes, only the finest of gay ships in Stardew Valley. O only the finest for this channel. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But the, yep, that's what the wheel landed on. I, I would have loved to read more Colores, but uh, I, I we, we have to do what the wheel says. We do what the wheel wills. Yeah. Maybe maybe next time, maybe this session, like after we read this, maybe we'll get crafting table X for us. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> I've read some bad ones in, in my life, so. I kind of want to read a bad one. Oh, I have plenty then. We'll read multiple bad ones since they're always so damn short. <laughs> they're they're like one like one part unfinished books from 2020. <laughs> but uh, this video is not about Minecraft. Uh, this video is about Stardew Valley. <laughs> Titled "I Don't Know: A Sam X Sebastian." Even though it's two of our favorite characters. Yes. Uh, Golden Retriever Boy and uh, Black Cat Energy over there. <laughs> Even though it's listed as ongoing, the chapter, like chapter 7 says ending. I guess they just didn't bother to label it complete. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I can respect the laziness. I too am very mm -hmm. lazy. Also, <laughs> also, they spelled one of the tags they spelled wrong. It's They spelled Sardi Valley wrong. <laughs> It did. Mm -hmm. It's Stardew uh, Valley. Uh, yeah, it was on the E. Valley. Valley. Mm -hmm. Alright, what, what the fuck is this description? You never shown any interest in Sam's games before, she said, crossing your arms. Okay, I asked, confused. Is there something going on? She asked, gesturing to him and then back to me. I scoffed. What the fuck do you mean, something going on? I said, defensive. You know, she said, her tone softening. I knew, shoot. I would have never told her. Don't concern yourself, okay? Alright, so they fucking... <laughs> that's what it makes it sound like right there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I think's going on. I'm just, just spitballing. It's indicated. Yeah, it's it very indicated. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't list this as mature, so I don't know what's going to happen in this book. <laughs> Are the tags just, um, what, readers tag it, or the author tags it? The author tags it. Okay. So the author willingly put those tags in there. So, I cannot wait to see what the fuck's gonna go on here. Hmm. Alright, what the fuck do I flip? I can flip this business card that I have laying on my desk. Do it. Yeah, do you want to be the white part, or the, the part that has their information? Uh, the information. Alright. It's the information! Yay. Yeah, that means you lose. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright. Excuse the, uh, excuse the vulgar language for the first few sentences. <laughs> Alright, chapter one. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Are you okay? Sam glared at me, raising an eyebrow. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I responded, looking at my feet. Okay, well, you're playing like trash, he said, laughing through his words. We were at band practice in Sam's room. Well, we would be if Abigail were here, but she'd been sick for the past few days. So we were mostly just fucking around. Thanks, fucker. Dad, this author <laughs> likes this word. Yeah, that's her favorite word, is the F word, apparently. <laughs> I'm already, like, looking ahead, and I just see the word eight more times. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, fucker, I responded laughing. I sat down on my guitar and took a seat on his bed. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on with me, but something changed up Sam the past few weeks. He looked... different. He looked... I don't know, he looked good, that's all. <laughs> Fuck. That wasn't all. I hadn't felt that way... I haven't felt the way I felt about Sam since I was with Abby. And even then, things weren't as... vivid. With Abby, I was warm and content. With Sam, I feel like I'm on fire. Sam threw a drumstick on the ground, and it rolled near my feet. I picked it up and threw it back at him, laughing through my teeth. 
Hey, he exclaimed, ducking his head while the stick hit a bookcase behind him. So, when do you think Abby will be back? I asked. Why, mister? He teased, making a kissing face. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> I rolled my eyes. <laughs> I rolled I'm, my eyes. I'm sorry, it's really funny hearing you cuss. Because you don't look <laughs> like the type to ever cuss. Oh my god, this is... I, I've reached my limit for today. I, I have to replace it with the extension. I'm gonna replace fuck with Frick now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you remind <laughs> me of like this old lady I worked with that on my old job. She's the sweetest old lady. She's so sweet to everyone, but like one, like every once in a while a customer will get on her nerves and she'll be like, that fucking bitch. And I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh... Hey, he exclaimed, ducking his head. Oh, wait, no, I wasn't there. Uh, shut the F up, man. I rolled my eyes. I was just asking. I don't know, I'll text her, he responded, pulling out his phone. There was a pause while I waited for him to finish. Why do you two break up anyway, he asked, shoving his phone back into his pocket. I audibly groaned. I already told you, I said, falling back onto his bed. You called her a bitch. <laughs> Didn't come to practice for weeks. And now you avoid her. That's not an explanation, Explanation, he explained, still sitting at his drums. I was lying. She is a, a bitch, I responded. <laughs> she was, but that wasn't the reason we broke up. She was the only one who knew I was bisexual, which I think is alarming, considering how I dress, but whatever. She asked, what, she asked me if I had ever been with another guy. I said no. She told me she didn't want to hold me back. She wanted me to experience life. But a week later, she was with someone from Zuzu City, so I don't think the breakup was really about me. Oh, damn. damn. She broke up with him just to sleep with another guy, damn. <laughs> those city people. Yeah, those darn city folks with their contaminated air. <laughs> with their cellular devices. Yeah, with their high criminal rates. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Seb. Sam Sam responded, slightly annoyed. She, uh, I paused, sitting back up from the bed. She's dating someone from the city, I responded. Oh, that frickin' sucks, he responded, softening his tone. I let out a long sigh before mumbling, yeah. Sam's phone went off. Oh, that's her, he said, pulling out his phone again. She said she's not coming back for another week, so it's just you and me, he said, smiling. We aren't gonna get stuff done, I said, <laughs> laughing. Probably not, he said, laughing with me. Where'd that stick go? He mumbled to himself as he got up and started to pace around his room. I'd known for a while that I liked guys, but I had never looked at Sam that way in the past. But everyone says when you're gay, you're bound to fall in love with your best friend. I guess they weren't wrong. That's you know a thing? What you're doing? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, would I guess so. Friends, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? He asked, snapping me out of my head. What? He walked towards me and crouched down to reach for something under the bed. He pulled out a six-pack of beer and held it up. Hey, I responded, reaching towards him and pulling out a single can. Where'd you get it? I asked. Shane, who else? He responded, laughing. Freaking dope, I said, cracking the pop top. Sam sat next to me on the bed and did the same. Do you know what you're going to do this fall? He asked, shifting his position so he was sitting cross-legged. I took a long sip of the beer and shrugged my shoulders. Not really. My parents don't expect much because of how much of a damn genius Maru is. I wasn't wrong. Mom barely even asked about school anymore. I was planning on going to the community college at half an hour away, but withdrew my application a day before the submission date. I couldn't bring myself to go. There was a pause before I returned the question. What about you? Any scholarships yet? He laughed and looked down at his can. No, I have a game tomorrow though, and I hear a scout from Zuzu State will be there. So maybe I'll get lucky, he took a sip. I've only been to a few of his soccer games, mostly because Abby made me go. They never really interested me before. Mind if I come? I asked, avoiding eye contact. I knew he wouldn't mind. Why would he? But it still made me nervous to ask. He snorted and his eyes shot up at me. You? You want to come to a soccer game? Your soccer game, not just a soccer game, stupid, I responded lightly, punching his arm. Yeah, whatever, man. You can come, he said, shaking his head before chugging the rest of his beer. He crushed it with his fist and tossed it into the trash can next to his bed. Pass me another, he asked, gesturing at the cans on the floor beside me. I pulled one out of the plastic rings and passed it over. 
Our fingertips touched, and I felt my face get hot immediately. Oh my god, it's getting spicy in here now. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't seem to notice as he took out his phone and began scrolling through it. I let the pause in conversation linger for a bit before I said, I withdrew my application from Roseville. What? His eyebrows scrunched together at the news. Why? He asked, still somewhat glancing down at his phone. I don't know, I just didn't want to be trapped there. Trapped here. I just want to get a place in the city or something. Everyone goes to Roseville. I don't want to be like frickin' Penny, I said, disgusted. If I went, you could be frickin' Penny. He retorted, laughing at his own joke. Aha, uh -huh. I mocked, rolling my eyes. She's not my type, I finished. Why not, Sam asked. She's hot. <laughs> not into the teacher type, I responded, slightly taken back. I didn't know Sam thought of any Sam thought anything of Penny. Suit so yourself, he said, shrugging his shoulders. I finished my beer and tossed it into the trash can. I laid back onto the bed and looked up at a ceiling. Alright, I'm popcorn you here. Man, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, I read some more. Alright, fine, fine. Not gonna have another, he asked, his face glowing from the phone screen. Nah, Robin's waiting waiting up for me, I responded. You're not staying over? He asked, looking up from his phone. I felt my heartbeat go through my chest at the question. I wasn't planning on it, I said. Truthfully, I didn't think I could get any sleep with him being so close, even if I slept on an air mattress on the other side of the room. Soccer games at 9 a.m., away game, he said, raising his eyebrows. I audibly groaned. Hey, you're the one who said you wanted to come, he responded, chuckling. I know I do. I said, ex exasperated. Sam got up and walked to his dresser. He pulled up the top dresser and threw me a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt I left there a few weeks back. Hey, I've been looking for this, I explained as I caught the wad of clothes flying my way. Sam snorted. It looks the same as every other black shirt you own, he remarked. He had a point. Sam slipped off his jacket and let it hit the ground. I watched as he kicked it into the corner of his room. We changed in front of each other plenty of times before, but this time was different. <laughs> Dang. Damn, it's getting spite. Where the fuck is the mature tag on this? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this time I was paying attention. He undid his belt and tossed it to, tossed it on top of the pile. He started with his jacket. He stepped out of his jeans, and I caught my breath before clearing my throat and attempt to clear the, the clear up the noise. Need water? He asked. His back still turned. Uh, no, I just have. I'll just have another beer since I'm staying. I shuddered. He slipped on a pair of elastic shorts. I'm gonna grab the air mattress, he said before exiting the room. While he was gone, I changed into the sweats and t-shirt. I whipped out my phone and texted Robin to let her know where I was. While I was waiting for Sam to reappear, I unhooked another beer from the, from the plastic and opened it before taking a sip. Suddenly, there was a loud thud before I heard Sam mumble, FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is the author's favorite word, it's just fuck. It is. How I'm many... just gonna control F this right now and see how many times it shows Yeah, up. please tell uh, me. 17. 17 times the word fuck comes up? Yes. Damn. <laughs> Sounds like my sister cussing. <laughs> <laughs> I exited the room to find Sam on the ground with the air mattress practically unfolded under underneath him. I chuckled before asking, What the hell happened? I extended my hand out to help him up. I tripped, he muttered, his cheeks flushed. He grabbed my hand, losing his balance halfway up, instead pulling me down with him. Fucking shit, I mumbled, crashing onto the floor. Sorry, he said, chuckling. I started laughing with him, clutching myself and rolling off the air mattress. He did the same thing and stood up. He reached out his hand and I grabbed it, hoisting myself up. He grabbed the mattress and, and dragged it into his room and I followed. He plopped it down next to his bed, still half deflated. Do you have the pump? I asked, unfolding it. Uh, yeah, he said it before exiting the room and returning with it. He handed it to me and I attached it to the mattress. I sat on the ground, drinking my beer as I watched it inflate. Be right back, Sam muttered, mumbled as he exited the room again. My eyes wandered as he, as I waited for him to get back. I saw that he let this phone in the bed, unlocked. I stood up and walked over out of curiosity. Man, fucking snooping! <laughs> Tinder, I whispered to myself, 
I'm confused on the white screen with the orange flame. He Damn, never... that's not grinder. That's weird. Wait, is that the grinder thing? Or is... Huh? No, I was I was saying it's not grinder, not tender. Oh. I thought it was uh, a stab X and F. And... Uh <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be a surprise. They're like, oh shit, he's bi as well! <laughs> Whoa! Oh no! <laughs> he never really struck out to me as someone who used Tinder. But I guess our options are pretty fucking limited here. I as I started to walk away, I opened the notification up that read, new Tinder message from Steven. Steven? I did a double take. Okay. Steven, I whispered. There's no way that's a girl's name. The same like guys too? See, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Before I could think about it anymore, he came back into the room. I swiftly walked away from the bed and sat down on the floor. Is it working? He asked, keeping his eyes down. Yeah, it's done, I replied, unhooking the motor from the air mattress. I, s I slithered away from the bed and reached for my phone. New message from mom giving the okay to stay at Sam's. I'm gonna grab a blanket from the hall closet, I said, getting up from and exiting the room. I opened the closet door and grabbed the blue blanket with soccer balls all over it. I chuckled and walked back to the room, holding it up on display. Cute! Ha oh, yeah. freaking nerd. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the chorus saying that he's gonna go run away and cry. <laughs> <laughs> he glanced up and rolled his eyes. Shut up, my dad mailed it to me. I instantly felt bad for saying anything. His dad still hasn't returned from the war, and I knew Sam was worried he might never. Don't worry, he will. Year two. <laughs> Maybe there's a plot twist. Yeah. There is a mod that is, like, like for... I believe his name is Ken. Uh, Jody's husband. There's a mod uh -huh. that, like, year two, there's a chance that he may not return. And, like, you can, like, you can marry Jody. And everything like he, they make her single and everything you can try to marry her and there's a chance that like ken will not return but if he does then you just have like you just married his wife and he's just divorced by the time he comes back from war Sheesh. yeah i gotta find it it was so funny my <laughs> like, damn kick a do while he's down just marry his own wife <laughs> oh sorry i mumbled switching off the lights and walking back to my mattress it's fine i'm just glad he's alive he responded in a somber tone. He locked his phone and set it down on the bedside table. He grabbed the remote and aimed it at the tiny TV in the corner of his room. I flickered awake and began playing a rerun basketball game. I laid down on the mattress and glared up at the TV. I wanted to say something to, to comfort him about his dad, but I've never known anyone to fight in a war. My dad skipped out just because he wanted to, I guess. You think he's coming back soon? I asked, staring at the ceiling. I don't know, he mumbled. I've lived so much of my life without him at this point. I don't really think of him as my as a father anymore. <laughs> Holy shit, this is... <laughs> what the fuck? I thought this was just gonna be gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's just some guy that sends me soccer ball blankets, he snorted. At least he cares, I said, thinking about my own dad. There was a long pause. <laughs> he sighed. I'm sorry, man, he mumbled, barely audible. I closed my eyes and listened to the TV in the background. My head was swimming with what had happened tonight. I couldn't get the idea of who Steven was out of my head. Maybe Abby would know? She's the only one who knows about me after all. I pulled out my phone and opened up my messages. Hey, I know this is random, but I have a question about Sam. I typed and hoped that she would be still awake. A few minutes later, a few minutes went by as she responded. You want to talk about Sam at 11.56 p.m.? She wrote. I rolled my eyes. Does he like dudes? I typed. <laughs> Let it sit there for a while as I stared <laughs> at the question. I couldn't send it. I deleted it and started over. Did you know he uses Tinder? I typed. Lots of people do, she replied. I sighed. This wasn't going anywhere. Never mind, I sent, remembering why I didn't want to talk to her anymore. I locked my phone and set it on the ground beside me. Good night, I mumbled, shifting my body away from the TV. Night, he replied. I'll wake you up in the morning for my game. Alright. Dude, I can't believe the fucking uh, Sebastian's fucking like in gay panic mode already. But they're just trying to sing fucking music and they're like, I don't know why, but suddenly I feel like this sensation to make out with my best friend. <laughs> huh. 
One of the comments is that's why I quit being a lesbian. <laughs> what, because of Sebastian or Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's both. They canceled their lesbian membership. <laughs> The other comment says, no, my butter's name is Steven. <laughs> Damn. That sucks for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot of comments on here. Yeah, there was 200, right? Is there? I think it said at the top there was like 224. Wait, how popular is this? It has 20,000 reads. Okay. Yeah. It's like... Quite a bit. Pretty decent book. I'm guessing it's pretty decent since it's complete. <laughs> wow, it's if you go to the uh, home page of the book, mm -hmm. um, it's ranked number one for Stardew Valley. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that. Because it's the only tag that spells it wrong. <laughs> All right, let me <laughs> control F and see how many fuck words are in here. Oh, there's only one. Oh, and the next part. Yep, you know, it's right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to read it. Yeah, you have to. It's the only fuck word in here. Alright, All right, chapter two. The next morning, I was awoken by Sam hurling a soccer ball at my body. Wake up, fricker, he muttered. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wake up, fucker, he muttered. I lazily opened my eyes to him shirtless, pacing around the room. I rubbed my eyes and lazily sat up, drinking in the view. What time is it? I asked, reaching for my phone. Time for the game. And if we're late, I'm gonna kill you, he responded, sliding on his jersey. Do I have time to go home and change? I asked, rubbing my eyes. He paused and glanced at the clock on his bedside table. You're cutting it close, dude, he mumbled, before taking a seat on his bed. He reached down for his tennis shoes and started slipping them on. I'll give you a ride on my motorcycle if you let me, I bribed. He'd been bothering me for a while about the motorcycle, and I never thought it was safe enough. But I'd taken it on a few test rides since he last asked, and everyone seemed fine. His, uh, his head snapped up. Really? He asked, unsure. Yeah, sure, I asked with a smile before standing up and sliding on my converse. He hesitated for a beat before jumping up from, his, from the bed. Deal, he said, walking out of the room. I followed and waited for him at the front door while he went into the kitchen. Sebastian's taking me on his motorcycle, so I'll meet you guys there, he, is ex he explains, before grabbing a granola bar from the pantry. Okay, just be safe, Jody called out as Sam exited the kitchen and swiftly went walked to the front door. Alright, let's go, he said, before opening the front door and gesturing for me to follow him. As we started walking to my house, I thought about what I found on his phone last night. It almost didn't feel real. He never struck me as someone who came, who come, oh, probably can, who can be <laughs> interested in guys. <laughs> Although I guess that's just me playing into stereotypes. I wanted to bring it up, but I couldn't figure out how. I just didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. He was my best friend above anything, and I didn't need to get my hopes up that anything could happen between us. No. Have to think of it. <laughs> there needs to be something that happens between the two of you! <laughs> Come to think of it, Sam hadn't dated anyone from Pelican Town in the four years I've known him. We met in 8th grade when he moved here for his dad. Kent was deployed a few short months later and had remained a distant memory ever since. When it was all laid out in front of me, I felt bad for him. He hadn't experienced life in the way that most 18-year-olds do. No dad, no girlfriend, or boyfriend. No freedom from a town of under a hundred people. Wait, a hundred people? I mean, there's only like 28 people in town. Yeah, I swear there was like... It's like 28 or... 24 or something. Yeah, there's barely anyone in that town. <laughs> I started to feel gross about it. Like, my chest was tightening around my lungs until I had some... I had to say something just to keep breathing. Hey, uh, I'm sorry for bringing up your dad last night, I mumbled, shoving my hands in my pocket. He snorted. Why are you sorry? You're not the one who left, he said, matter-of-factly. <laughs> Oof. Damn. <laughs> that sucks, kid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I, I will leave, just like your dad, he mumbled. No, I'm just kidding. I, didn't say that. 
I'm sure he doesn't think of it that way, I mumbled. That's what it is, he said, letting out a long sigh. Vincent is starting to ask about him. What do you tell him, I asked quietly. The same stuff I tell myself. And he'll come home soon. He let out a hollow laugh and ran a hand through his hair. Jesus, you're depressing, I joked, lightly shoving him. He laughed. Yeah, I know. When we finally reached the front door, I turned to him. You can wait out here. I'll only be a minute. He nodded and leaned up against the garage. I pulled open the front door and was greeted by Mom's smiling face. Hi, Sebby. How was Sam's? Problem beamed up at me. Uh, good. I'm gonna hit a soccer game this morning, I mumbled, making my way to the, to the basement floor. Oh, that's great, sweetie, she said softly. She was also she was always so proud whenever I left the basement. <laughs> <laughs> basement dweller in their 20s, eating Cheetos, probably a computer science major. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I don't know why that sentence is so funny. She was, all, she was always so proud whenever I left the basement. <laughs> Look, sunlight, sweetie. Yes. <laughs> If there was windows down there, she would come down and be like, Oh, it's a, it's a little dark in here, and she opens it and he's like... <laughs> You're just screeching? Yeah. Like, oh, oh it burns! Sun. It burns! <laughs> yeah. I would be more offended if it weren't from a place of love. Oh, and Mom? I'm taking the bike, I said nervously. She was okay with me working on the bike, but wasn't thrilled about me riding it. Nonetheless, she usually let me get away with it, as long as I promised to be safe. Her face turned sour for just a second before she masked it with a cheery smile. All right, dear. Promise to be safe, she asked. Of course, I responded with a smile before turning my back and heading downstairs. I riffled through the, drawer, the dresser drawers until I found a fresh pair of jeans and a dark purple hoodie. It was better than black at, at least. I quickly changed and headed to the bathroom to brush my teeth. I stopped to look at my reflection and couldn't help but notice the bedhead I was unfortunately sporting. I ran my fingers through my hair and tried to press down any cowlicks to no avail. Just use a comb. Look, <laughs> you're in your room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have one. Yeah. He, he Us like computer science majors just... don't have any. Yeah. Oh, you're telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed the motorcycle keys from under the carpenter counter and headed out the front door. Sam's head shot up from his phone as I walked closer. He quickly shoved it in his pocket and I opened the garage door. Uh, I'll let you read here. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that looks way better than the last time I seen it, he said in, in awe. I couldn't help but think it was cute. How excited he got over a seemingly small thing. Now I see why you want me to start here. <laughs> Itch. Yeah, I was skimming ahead. Damn it! I've fallen for your tricks! <laughs> I smiled. Yeah, I've been keeping it for everyone for a while. I ruffled through the box on the workbench and pulled out two helmets. Here, I said, extended one out to him. It might ruin your hair, though, I tease. He, f he flipped me off with the middle finger before sliding the helmet over his head. I guess that it's technically another F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you gave him the bird. Yeah. I laughed and did the same. Climbed on the Climbed on and patted the seat behind me, gesturing him to sit. You sure you know what you're doing? He asked, climbing on. I could feel his heartbeat through his shirt as he wrapped his arms around my waist. I could see why you made me start here. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. Nervous? I asked, taking the, the stand up for my foot. I, I couldn't hear, but he responded through the sound of the engine starting up as I cranked the, the throttle. I feel his arms nervously tighten around me, and my face started to burn. I, I pulled out of the garage and made my way towards the highway. It was a short 20 minute drive, which as I made my way through traffic easily enough, it was too loud for any form of conversation, so I was burning from feeling his body so close to mine. <laughs> I pulled into the parking lot and cut the engine. He released his arms and slowly climbed off the bike. I followed suit, while also taking off my helmet. I placed it on the seat of the bike and, and ran my hands through my hair to undo any helmet hair. Sam did the same. So, I asked, watching him intently. It was sick, dude. I can't believe you've been holding out on me, he said excitedly. Sorry, I said with a smile. I'm almost late. I'll catch up with you later, he noted, and he started to jog towards the field. 
Sounds good, I called out after him. I was making my way towards the bleachers when I saw a flash of purple out of the corner of my eye. Abigail. Fuck, there's an... <laughs> Abigail? I whispered to myself as my head whipped in her direction. Sure enough, there she was, prancing along with some girl I've never seen before. She's a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched her for a bit before following her to the stands. I, I just was... realized that this Pelican Town's next generation is screwed. <laughs> They're all gay. There's gonna be they no have descendants. Less than twenty-five people. Yeah, and half of them are gay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's gonna be ten people. Yeah. <laughs> I was confused that she took a seat near the home team before I realized why she was there. A boy with shaggy brown hair and defined muscles walked up to her and wrapped her into a hug before kissing her on the cheek. Fuck! I mumbled to myself. I kept walking until I was on the visitor side, keeping my head down. I climbed on the metal stairs and took a seat on the top row. Not many people were on this side, but I still wanted to be alone. I glanced towards Abby, watching her and the girl i never seen as they gush over her new boyfriend. No wonder she dumped uh, me. <laughs> never mind. What, what was it? She's not a lesbian. Oh, uh, damn it. I don't know. It still could be a possibility. Maybe she, like, heard that Sam was, like... By and she was like, "Damn, I should try that." And now she's like, "Polly" or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder she dumped me. I'm clearly not her type. I looked away and made eye contact with Sam out of the field. I shook my head and nodded towards the home side. He looked over and then back at me before taking out his phone. A minute later, I heard a notification chime on him. Abby, it read. He has his phone out while playing fucking soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's on the bench. Yeah, I thought- yeah, he said he's not in the field, though. You shouldn't have your phone out there when you're playing. <laughs> it's a- it's a safety thing. Yeah. I saw him look- uh, you're playing against your boyfriend, I replied. I saw him look around for him before he made eye contact with Abby. She waved with a smile. He didn't return the greeting. <laughs> a few minutes later, the game began. I watched for a minute. The players ran back and forth on the field with no attempt for me to understand how the game worked. I couldn't get my mind off of Abby and her new boyfriend. Also, it was incredibly clear she wasn't sick, so why was she missing band practice? I hit a moment of weakness and decided to pull out my phone. Having fun at the game I typed? Bro, that is so fucking petty. Send it. Send it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched her, waiting for the reply to be received. A few minutes passed before she looked down at her phone. I saw her eyes frown and confused before her head whipped up in an effort to find me in the crowd. It wasn't hard, <laughs> since I was the only one in all dark clothing, as well as the only one sitting alone. I watched her whisper something to the girl beside her before she stood up and started making her way towards me. Damn it, I mumbled, leaning my head back. Maybe you shouldn't have done that, but... <laughs> run! Yeah, run! <laughs> run back to the motorcycle! <laughs> I didn't want to face her, especially not now. Within minutes, she stomped up on the, s the metal stairs to meet me. What the hell? She demanded standing over me. What? I asked, crossing my arms. What are you doing here? She asked, taking a seat next to me. I slid away from her before continuing. Sam's playing, I noted, moving her my eyes towards the field. I know, that's why I'm here, she said, her voice unsure. No, it's not, I said matter-of-factly. She was silent, waiting for me to continue. I saw your boyfriend, I finished. He's not, I mean, we're not, she stuttered. Yeah, he he is, I said, keeping my eyes away from her. I saw you two. She let her a long sigh. I'm sorry, Seb, she said, putting a hand on my knee. I moved my leg away, letting her hand drop. You're obviously not sick, I continued. Will doesn't think it's good for me to be in a band with an ex-boyfriend, she mumbled, looking at the ground. Will said that, I snorted. He just wants what's best for me, she pleaded, sweet sweetening her tone. I laughed. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, Abby, I said, brushing her off. I'm sorry, she said again, waiting for me to respond. When I didn't, she decided to press me about Sam. You never showed an interest in Sam's games before, she said, crossing her arms. Okay, I asked, confused. Is there something going on? She asked, gesturing to him, then back at me. I scoffed. What the fuck do you mean, something's going on? I asked defensively. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is what we read in the description! I... 
You know. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, she said, her tone softening. I knew I wouldn't... I should have never told her. Don't concern yourself, okay? I say, shifting my weight away from her. Fine, she said, pulling, putting her hands up in defense before standing up and walking back to the home side. I let out a sigh and dug my hands in my pocket for a cigarette. Shit, I whispered, realizing I left them at home. I noticed a con concession stand and decided to settle for gum when if they had any. I sat up made my way down the stairs and glanced up at the scoreboard. It was almost half time, thank god. I knew I'd, volu I'd volunteer to be here, but I was bored out of my mind. Sam looked good in his uniform, but it seemed to be the only benefit. While I made it to the stand, I walked up to the cashier. I'll take a pack of peppermint gum, I mumbled, taking out my wallet. 75 cents, she replied cheerfully. I took out a wrinkled dollar and slid it across the counter. She turned back to grab the gum. I took the dollar and handed me back a quarter. I dropped in the chip drawer and grabbed my gum. Thanks, I said, turning my back. By the time I made it back to my seat, it was half time. I kept my head in my phone, avoiding any chance of making eye contact with Abby. Is the scout from Zuzu stay here? I typed and said to Sam. I think so, he replied a, f a few minutes later. If he's if the, if the scout's there, you should not be on your phone during the game. That looks so bad. <laughs> I, I feel like he's like not... Is he on a bench or something? There's no way he has a phone on the field while he's playing. I mean, like... I've seen like actual baseball players like like on TV and whatnot have like shit on them all the time. That it's clearly like a safety thing. So I don't know. He could have it in his pocket, <laughs> but he shouldn't. <laughs> you know, it's just like kicking the ball around. And you're like, hold on, hold on, I got a text on it, and then like stopping what you're doing. <laughs> I looked at the field and made eye contact with him. He nodded his head towards the man wearing a gray suit, holding a clipboard. I nodded in response and quickly typed, Good luck to Sam. I unwrapped my gun and popped the piece in my mouth. While I was waiting for halftime to end, I started to think about last night. Maybe it wasn't so crazy for him to be interested in guys, especially after what Abigail said. She didn't make it seem like a far-fetched idea for us to be together. The idea turned my face red. For the, f for the rest of the game, I tried to pay attention to Sam, since I knew this was a big opportunity for him. I certainly hope you get the scholarship, so I'd have more reason to move to the city. Of course, I, w I couldn't help but wonder why he wanted, wanted to, fuck, why he'd want to be with me, considering all the options he had had at college. Either way, I wanted to support him. Once the final whistle was blown, I waited for the stands to clear out. I saw the man with the gray suit walk over to Sam, clap his hand on his back. I saw him made my way over down the bleacher, keeping an eye on their conversation. I couldn't hear anything, but it seemed like it was going well. I decided to wait for my motorcycle, since I knew he'd wanted to talk to his family first. I passed the garbage can and spit my gum into it. When I looked up, I saw Abigail holding hands with Will. <laughs> Bitch. I mumbled to make him find my way out of the stadium. <laughs> Before I, I got in my once I got to my bike, I waited there for about fifteen minutes before I saw Sam approaching with his family. He flashed me a thumbs up and started walking faster towards me. I fucking got it, he explained. I let out my hand as he slapped it with his own before wrapping me into a hug. I was taken aback as we usually were never touchy with each other, but I figured it was purely out of excitement. Hell yeah, I yelled back, releasing the hug. You guys mind if I ride back with him? Sam asked, turning towards his family. Of course, sweetie, Jody replied, giving me a, giving a smile. Seppi, we're all going to the bar once once we go back to celebrate. You're more than welcome to join us, she offered, locking eyes with me. Oh, great, thanks, I replied, smiling politely. As we walked towards the car, as we watched their car, Sam turned towards me. You don't have to come to that, he mumbled. No, I'm celebrating too, I slightly shoved him. His smile, he smiled and I could have sworn his face flashed pink. Speaking of flashing, there's a flash of lightning outside. Is it raining over there? Yeah, it says heavy rain on my little thing right now. Oh, I hear thunder, but I don't see any rain. Yeah. I had, I've had a friend in the city when I, when I move, I trailed off. I mean, hopefully when I move, I finish glancing back at the field. You should, I, he explained. I wouldn't have any... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, 
I only finished half of that sentence in my head and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have anyone to fuck with and if you don't come, he said laughing. I only finished after <laughs> after that and I'm like, wait <laughs> I don't think he means that connotation. Yeah, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just like did a double take and just thought of all the scenarios in your head. Yeah, I was you like, just, like oh. blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up on a wagon after I blacked out. <laughs> I cried the smile and passed him a helmet. He slid it over his head and I did the same for mine before jumping onto my bike. He climbed behind me and wrapped his arms around my chest. My body tightened for a split second, then relaxed. It almost felt natural having him this close to me. The drive back was quick after stopping for gas near the stadium. Once I pulled into the garage, Sam released his arms and took off his helmet. I did the same and we both climbed off the bike. Your hair's a little flat, I said, raising an eyebrow at him. He rolled his eyes. Fix it, then, he said, holding the helmet in both hands. I hesitated for a second before reaching my hand out and running it through his hair. I could feel his eyes burning into my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as I can do, I said, averting my eyes from him. I'm gonna stop inside for a minute, I said, turning to walk to the front door. Wait, he said. I'll come with. He followed as I opened the front door, expecting to see Mom. But she wasn't there, I quickly turned and made my way down to the basement stairs. I opened the door and Sam followed behind me before taking a seat on my bed, sitting his helmet down on the ground. I, s I set mine at my computer desk and started rummaging through my things, trying to find my c cigarette carton. What you looking for? he asked. My OC scrolling through his phone. Smokes, I mumbled. You gotta quit that shit, dude, it's gross. He said before throwing a balled up t-shirt at my head. I dodged and grim grimaced at him. It's not that easy, Sam, I said, finally pulling the carton out from under my keyboard. I tried my best to hide them from Mom. Ready to go? I asked, pulling, starting to walk up the room. No, wait, what happened to Abby? He asked. I sighed and turned to him. Well, as you know, she's a bitch, I said laughing. Yeah, yeah, he responded. Um, she's not in the band anymore, I said, leaning against the bedroom wall. What? He explained with his eyebrows shut up. Yeah, her, her new boyfriend, Will, doesn't think it's a good idea, I mumbled. Why is the band not a good idea? He asked, spinning his words. Will doesn't think it's a good idea for her to be in a band with me, I clarified, crossing my arms. That's stupid, he said, his body tensing. I shrugged my shoulders. I guess I can see where he was coming from. But that doesn't make me any less angry. Plus, it was so unlike Abby to listen to anyone, to anything any man told her to do. Doesn't seem like her, Sam noted, nearly reading my mind. Whatever. You want to go now? I asked, trying to get out of the conversation. Sure, he mumbled, getting up and following me out the house. We spent the rest of the night at the bar, talking with his family about his future at Zuzu State. He seemed so excited and happy. But I couldn't feel... I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness at the idea of losing him if he, if he, if I couldn't move out there. But he only had a few months left before he would leave. I made me realize that I need to tell him how I felt, regardless how he might respond. Ooh. Oh, it's getting spicy. It's it's going. <laughs> it's going. The pot has been stirred. How many times does the F word appear in this chapter? Does it tell me? I don't think it's uh, registering uh, this whole thing, but see. it's okay. Five. Five. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, honestly, uh, it's way better than 17. Honestly, we gotta bump those number up. Those those are rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we should rewrite this and then put like every other word is the F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all you. Oh, uh, hold on. I'm just reading some of the comments. Uh, <laughs> the comments are the best part of Wattpad. Especially you know, like certain sections when something happens and they all go crazy. And like that one section, they're like, yo! <laughs> or, or my favorite ones are when they, um, when it's a gay ship and someone does a little something fruity and then all the comments on the side are like, he's gay! He's so, he's so gay! <laughs> 
That's literally one of the comments. One of the comments says, "Y'all, I think he's gay." Yeah, he's like, "I don't want, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, I think he's a little fruity." <laughs> and you gotta be like, "Really? You're reading a gay fan fiction? And you're surprised that they're fruity?" <laughs> <laughs> Stand hugs, not drugs. I like that comment. Yeah. Alright, chapter three. Let me see how long this is. Is it long? It'll probably be the last chapter that we read. Uh, it's like medium. Medium to longish. Okay. Alright, how many F words in this? Mm. Four. Okay. Oh. We're reducing. We're reducing. What the fuck? <laughs> hey! <laughs> You gotta censor that now. What the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> what the frick am I talking about? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you sound so fucking weird right now, man. Freaking weird? I know. Yeah. <laughs> you censor <All> right. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say to F word, I'm just gonna make a boop <laughs> sound. <laughs> Alright, All chapter right. three. That night, I walked home alone after saying goodbye to Sam at the bar. He was beaming from ear to ear every time he told someone about his scholarship, and each person was more proud of him than blessed. The whole town felt bad for him, and Vincent, and, and Vincent since their dad left. The scholarship left felt like a family victory. I just wish I was going with him. Not only to be with Sam, but to get out of here. Abigail was the only person I thought really understood me. None of my hobbies were weird to her. My clothes weren't my clothes didn't freak her out. I thought she, she'd be leaving with me. That was always our plan, at least. We'd stay up all night talking in the graveyard about how we'd make enough money for an apartment. How we'd sneak away on my motorcycle and never come back. But I guess that concept is dead. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> talking late night at a graveyard was a concept in the first place? Yeah. That's new to me. I mean, there is a graveyard in town. Okay, but I'm not talking, <laughs> I'm not talking late night there. I'm gonna be attacked by a zombie or something. Nah, nah, that's how you get, like, haunted, dude. By, like, chilling in the graveyard at night. That's how you get a ghost to follow you home and fuck up your shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why would you do that? I don't know. Maybe they're like, dude, that'd be so cool if we had a <laughs> if we had a ghost haunt us. Abigail would definitely think that would be hot. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help but fill with rage whenever whenever I thought of her now. She made me feel like everything I ever wanted was possible, and took it all away without even seeming hurt. It was 1am when I heard a knock at my bedroom door. I'd been laying awake, still wearing my jeans from earlier. I shifted my weight out of bed and walked towards the door. When I opened it, I was surprised to find Maru. Hey, I greeted her, confused. Maru had been my stepsister for about 10 years now. We didn't always get along, but she always respected me and I did the same for her. However, there was always a tension between us when it came to anything academically challenging. She was practically a genius and all her aspirations took a front side, a front seat, while you'd have to blow the dust off of mine to even see them. Despite that, we were pretty close. She told me practically everything that happened in her life and I did the same, except for a few minor details. I figured you'd still be up, she noted, brushing past me to take a seat on my computer chair. I closed the door behind her and walked back to my bed. She swiveled the chair to face me as I sat, as I sat cross-legged on top of my sheets. What's up, I asked. She took a deep sigh before speaking. I know you re resigned from Roseville. My eyes widened. How did you know? Why would you? I started stuttering while the idea of Mom and Demetrius finding out swirled through my hair. I didn't tell anyone, she confirmed, and I let out a sigh of relief. I just wanted to know why, she asked. I was silent for a while, keeping my eyes on the floor. It felt like I was getting lectured by mom. I felt like I was disappointing her. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I just can't stay here. I feel suffocated. This place is so... I motioned around the room, trying to find the right word to describe how I felt. Dull. Maru finished for me. Yeah, dull. I agreed. I can't stand the people. I can't stand the atmosphere. I just can't be here anymore. There was a long silence. I could hear squeaking coming from the swivel chair as she swifted, as she sifted her seat. 
She had already gone and graduated from Roseville. I didn't want her to think I wasn't proud. I was. It just wasn't right for me. She had a great job with Harvey. She liked what she did from what I could tell. It holds you back, she said, breaking the silence. I let the words sink in. Yeah, I ran a hand through my hair. It does. We both sat in silence, unsure of what the other was thinking. I didn't expect her to understand what I was going through, not even in the slightest. She did everything by the book and seemed to like it that way. I don't know if I want to stay either, she said, leaning her elbow on my desk. I scrunched my eyebrows together in confusion. What? I asked. I have so much potential. I don't get anything out of being here anymore. It used to be enough. It used to be all I'd ever wanted, she trailed off, blankly staring at the wall. Not anymore, she finished. What are you going to do, I asked. I don't know. I don't want to tell Dad. He put so much of his life on the back burner to be here for your mom, she paused. No offense, she said, her voice softening. I didn't feel hurt by what she said. My mom really did love it here, and Demetrius really loved her. He did whatever it took to be with her, even if it meant sacrificing his own happiness. Don't you think he'd be happy for you, though? That you're living out the life you wanted in the life that you want, I asked. She sighed. I don't know, probably. I don't want to leave him here with nothing. I stayed quiet, waiting for her to process her thoughts. But she quickly shifted her conversation to me. What are you going to do now? She asked, her eyes finally meeting mine. I want to move to the city. You know that. Everyone knows that. I chuckled. She smiled. Well, yeah, but are you really going to do it? She asked, her voice lifting. I don't know. I made all of those plans of Abby, I scoffed. Oh, she trailed off. But I have money saved. I have the will to go. And Sam got that scholarship, so I'll know somebody there at least, I said, picking up my mood. Well, I was thinking of something, she said, getting up from the chair and taking a seat on the bed next to me. She reached into her back pocket and pulled out an envelope. She opened it and took out the stack of dollar bills, ranging from 20s to 100s. Holy, yo, yeah, Mars been drug dealing. Yo, she fucking rolling in that money. <laughs> she made like eight inventions in the time they were watching soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said she figured out the thing for climate change. <laughs> <laughs> she cured cancer, <laughs> climate change. Yeah, world she hunger. World hunger. She made the superconductor. Yeah. <laughs> I closed my bank account last week. This is everything I had in it. Well, past enough for an apartment, she said, spreading the money over my sheets. My eyes stayed locked to the bed, watching your fingers move throughout the bills. Are you being serious? I asked in disbelief. She smiled. Why not? She gave me a list of things to do before the move and an estimated date of August 23rd. Today was June 6th. That gave us 78 days before we made our move. We decided against telling our parents just yet. Wanted to give them a few more weeks of blissful unawareness. By the time she left my room and tiptoed back to hers, it was 2.48 a.m. I was exhausted. I switched off the lights and climbed into bed. But as soon as I laid down, my eyes crept open. I couldn't sleep, couldn't even close my eyes without thinking about August. Without thinking about Sam. Without thinking. But I still hadn't figured out what I was going to do once I got to the city. I never thought I'd make it. I never thought I'd have a date to... Uh, I'd have a date to... To look forward to. I stared at my ceiling. The flicker from my desktop monitor pushed a dull blade. A dull blue. Of course, I could stick to my programming. That's what I did now and I was good at. But I never had any formal training. Of course, I could... I could... Work here. Who else would know how to do that stuff? But Zuzu? A lot more competition. The worry made my excitement slowly, slowly drift, and with that, I could finally feel my eyelids go heavy. Alright, popcorn, you here. Man, fuck. Alright. <laughs> it's a perfect transition. There's I know, three I know. stars. There's a new morning. I know, I just wanted to bitch at you. Sorry. <laughs> I woke up the next morning reborn from with motivation. 
I lazily opened my eyes and looked at the clock on my nightstand. It read 8 a.m., earlier than I had gotten up in a long time. There was something so freeing about waking up this morning, knowing that I only had 77 more nights surrounded by these basement walls in this stupidly small town. I threw on my old t-shirt and walked upstairs and into the kitchen and brew a cup of coffee. Unfortunately for me, Demetrius was already there. Well, he sat down in his mug and leaned up against his chair. You're up early, he remarked, eyes wide. Yeah, um, I got a lot of work to do today, I mumbled, pushing the, the chicken chair out of my wife's as I walked towards the counter. Good for you, kid, he remarked, bringing his mug to his lips before blowing out the steam. I remained silent, opening the lid of the coffee maker to dispose of the previous grounds. Demetrius flipped open the newspaper and dug in his head into it. I filled the machine with water and dumped the fresh grounds before hitting the start button, hearing it hiss. I jumped up to take a seat at the counter while I waited for it to brew, leaning my head against, leaning my head back to rest on the, the cupboards bef behind me as Demetrius cleared his throat. So, kid, what are you playing? F what are your plans for fall? He asked, keeping his eyes on the newspaper. I s snapped my head forward, jolted by the question. The fall? I asked. My brain skipped over what he meant. So going to Roseville? He asked as his eyes darted up from behind the paper. Oh, uh, yeah, I lied. Good. Education is important, he noted, bringing his eyes back to the paper. I hummed in agreement. My eyes fixated on the... the... Cariff? Sure, alright. The the coffee began to drip <laughs> into it. Oh, the, the fucking... the pot! I didn't know that it was called a cariff. I, I have no idea how it's pronounced. Cariff? I don't fucking know. I, I'm, I'm, the last, right now. I'm the last person you should ask of how to pronounce shit. <laughs> Mr. Uh, is it actually called a carafe? Carafe. Okay. Demetrius remained silent for the remainder of my time in the kitchen. Once it was done brewing, I leaped off the counter and poured it onto the mug that I set out earlier. See ya, I mumbled before heading down the hall, down the stairs, and into my bedroom. I set the cup on my desk and powered up my desktop, surveying my emails and started replying to a web design job submitted about a week ago. i have been putting it off due to pure empathy, but now that I was resigned with purpose, I hastily got to work. About three hours later, I heard a knock on my bedroom. I saw off my pet's phone and slowly got up from my, leg, from my seat, legs partially numb from how I was sitting. I opened the door to find Sam. Hey, I, I cut him off. Sam, holy fuck, you're not going to believe what I have to tell you, I said, eyes lighting up, lighting up as I shut them out of the doorway to close it. He stumbled forward and smiled. What? he asked, digging his hand to his pocket. Why are you fucking moving? I said, clutching, my, clutching both of his arms. What do you mean? he asked, his eyebrows frowned. To the city, we're fucking going. I, I said, releasing him, and I walked to my bed. I lifted the mattress and pulled out the envelope Mario had left there earlier. Come here, I waved over, patting the space next to me. He dropped his backpack and curiously walked over. I unloaded the money onto my bed, keeping my eyes glued on it. That's it, I said. There's my ticket out. He was silent, running his fingers through the, through the, over the money. I took a seat next to him and clapped the, a hand on his leg. Say something? I begged, eyes wide. I can't believe it, he muttered, eyes beating mine. Me neither, I said, hands still on his leg. He glanced at it and slightly shifted his weight towards me. Um, when are you leaving? He asked, voice shaky. End of August, I said, keep my hands still. That's so soon, he said, letting his eyes drop to the floor. That's when you're going, though, right? I asked, confused. Uh, yeah, I guess it is, he said with a chuckle. I let go of his leg and leaned back, falling on my mattress. I'm so close to getting out of here, I whispered. He fell back next to me and sighed. Yeah, he mumbled, turning his head to face me. What? I asked, noting his less than thrilled tone. I don't know, he said, turning to meet me. You're not scared? I sighed. No, I don't think so. Are, why are you? Yeah, he said, breathless, his pitch lifting. Fucking terrified, he whispered. I tilted my head to look at the ceiling as I felt my his fingers grace mine. My, my breath caught in my throat. We stayed still for a while, like 
hours before I slowly placed my hand over his. He was still at first unresponsive, then closed his fingers around mine. Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long we stayed that way, silent. Felt like forever, yet not long enough. After a while, Sam sat up, folding his legs again, up against his chest. Hey, Sebastian, he said, barely audible. Yeah, I asked, staring at the ceiling. I'm glad you're my best friend. No, what is it for? The 46 Thomas are like, no, stupid auto Hey, best friend. <laughs> this one just says KYS. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, it says you kill yourself. <laughs> oh, the comments. You're reading the comments. Yeah, and this one it says stupid autocorrect. I think he meant to say boyfriend. Right, Sam? Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, that was nice. <laughs> so, what'd you think? It's nice that they're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the worst. That's like when you get friends on. You're like, you know what? I see you like a brother, and you're like, great. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, of course. That's yeah. what I saw you as. Yeah, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go kill myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I guess if you guys would like to read and finish this book, I'll have a link down below. You probably guys will get by it faster than we did. <laughs> but uh, now it's everyone's favorite sub to subject, not subjects, segment, <laughs> before we spin the wheel to see how fucked we are the next time we have to re schedule a recording session. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best part of these Wattpad videos. Alright, so as long as it doesn't land on Seba Sam X Sebastian, we'll read it. Which I'm hoping for the chorus or the, the Harvey one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's, a, a person can hope. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, Fuck it, we're gonna her. finish it! <laughs> oh, we're finishing it, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're finally gonna finish the chorus X reader. I guess I'll remove it, because I think we'll finish it that episode. At least I hope so. You excited to read the Chorus X Reader? I <laughs> I know you had a fun time with it. <laughs> yeah, how when did we leave off on? What were they doing? We were we were crying in a cafe and Gore was like, 3DS, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, hey. <laughs> hey. Really, I remember in house saying that you looked like a nerd and we ran away crying. That was a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, and then what what else happened? We did the trials and we're like, damn, we can't stop thinking about Colrez. And then he moved out of the hotel and we're like, why did we let him go? <laughs> All I can think about is his topaz eyes. Yeah. <laughs> his brilliant gleaming topaz eyes. That's all you can think about about him. There's no other features that uh Exactly. That you, yeah. <laughs> That's all I look at, just eyes. That's all- <laughs> Hey, that's better than most men. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, well I can't wait to read that at some point. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one. Wrap that yeah. book up. Uh-huh. God, I'm glad I never- Like, I'm glad I saved it and never read it for this moment. This is my canon event. <laughs> this- <laughs> <laughs> How many, uh, like, fanfics do you have saved? Woo! Alright, hold on, hold on, let me see, let me see. Alright, forget I asked. It's, for, it's gonna be in the, like, triple digits. Anyway, let me, let me it's actually- It's gonna look like my plan to watch anime, which is literally in the triple digits. Oh, it doesn't say it on the... It doesn't say it on the desktop, but it does say it on the, on the app. Hold on. Hold on, let, let me cook, let me cook, hold on. Let her cook, let her cook. Oh, let's see, the number's going up. Oh, it's still counting. Okay, yeah, I have 201 stories. 201. Yeah. <laughs> and that's You just not... saw 201 fanfics and you were just like, yes, let me read this later. Yeah. And also, there's that's not counting the reading list that I have of things to read for a video. They're, like, not even included on there. Oh, God. Yeah, so... I'm proud of myself. <laughs> proud. Yes. Nice. 
Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna promote your socials, but you don't want me to put your socials in the description. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't even have any to promote, so. I don't know, man. Fucking join the Discord server. It's fun in there. You want you talk I, to this bozo? <laughs> I, I, I'm in it. I just... I, I don't go on Discord very mm -hmm. much, so I just... I don't read everything, but... Yeah, you randomly come on stuff. on, like, random times. <laughs> Mainly at night, on, like, a Tuesday. You're just like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on Discord. This is what you do. <laughs> I gotta go on just to make sure you didn't, like, message me and ask something. Yeah. Oh, I am messaging you about the fucking Wattpad thing. You're like, Saturday works, like, at this, like, this time, like, oh, dude, I'm gonna be at my parents at that time. Can we do before or after? And then you didn't respond. I'm like, buddy, I, I know you don't respond, but I need your answer. <laughs> I got on. Yeah. I responded. Eventually. Like, I have it on my notes somewhere of, like, under your profile of takes three to five business days to reply. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, my name is Phoenix, that was Minnow, and I guess we'll see you guys next time for another Wattpad reading in the future. Featuring the, uh, Colrez. <laughs> Colrez, Topaz eyes. Yeah, very, very Topaz eyes.